¿Está listo? ¿Están viendo? Sí. Ok. Eh, bueno. Hello, good morning to everyone. Good evening, wherever you are. Um, I'm so sorry for those who are in the States, mostly in the West Coast. Uh, maybe it's like seven in the morning. <laughs> worse, even worse if you are in Hawaii or Alaska, so maybe you are sleeping. So um, uh, this this was the the only time I can I can do it. So um, I I uh, well I expect you to share all these uh, videos that I'm going to do in English for those uh, who are not waking up. <coughs> Um, so, well, uh, first of all, to introduce a little bit of the idea of why uh, I decided to do this, um, this chats, this uh, answers and questions, questions and answers, <laughs> and uh, with all of you, because um, uh, this reality that we are going through with the quarantine all over the world kept us trapped in our houses. And uh, I am not an, at home, I'm in France. I was trying to learn, well, well, I am learning French <coughs> uh, for something I need to, uh, to know French. And, um, and so it, it get me here in, in, in France. So uh, I decided to, uh, to do every day at 3 p.m from France, this one hour of questions and answers. Uh, so I could, um, along all the quarantine, be answering all the questions that people may have uh, from all over the world that usually they do all these questions through uh, Instagram, through Facebook. And, um, and I don't usually read the, the the comments. I, I, I go through all of them to, to check many of the things, but I'm not a person who answers all the time in social media. So uh, that's why I decided to uh, open this opportunity to, uh, to receive all the questions that you may have to, <coughs> um, to uh, ask those questions to me. And I would try to answer them through the, this official channel uh, of RCM Foundation. Um, so uh, first of all, um, the, to make an introduction for being the first video, um, for all these people that may know me from Gaia, mostly of the English people knows me from Gaia. Well, I am from Argentina. I usually speak uh, Spanish. Uh, all the people that follows me normally is in Spanish, so that's why uh, all my social media is in Spanish. Because even even if I change right now the uh, even if there is lots of people in English following me now because of, of the series of initiation, um, is less than the ten percent of the people. So if I start to do everything in English. Um, would be very uncomfortable for all the people that usually follows me all the time in Spanish and not natural for me to explain all what I explain uh, only in English. So that's why I decided to use the, the um, Yo Soy account, uh, which is at um, yo soy dot, uh, red. Uh, that, that name. Um, so uh, that account of Facebook and Instagram is account that we use to make all the translations of everything that I post in my uh, official site. <clears throat> so whenever you want to have some information in, in English about me, you can go to that, um, to that um, account. So, um, of course, uh, uh, for those who know me from, from initiation, uh, when, when I'm trying to explain stuff in the series, I am watching into a camera like I'm doing now. And this is not the most comfortable thing for me, but now I'm more uh, relaxed because it's, it's not stressful with all the cameras and all the stuff. So 
Uh, I will try always to explain the things in different ways um, to, to make it more uh, pedagogic, I, I guess, <laughs> I think. Um, so um, before I start answering some of the questions that you may have, <coughs> I would like to set this clear. Um, everything that I know is not because I'm constantly connected to the network, um, is because everything that I have remembered. And remember has three different meanings. Remember means to remember the past. So that means that since I was a child, I was able to remember everything that I have done before I was born, all information that I was living. So that settles a point of view, which is uh, everything that I can answer, everything that I can know from my memories from the past um, are just the perspective of the universe that I have seen through my path through the universe. So that means that it's not the truth, it's the perspective of the truth. The truth is just one thing in the middle and there are thousands or billions of paths to get to that truth. So <clears throat> from the beginning of the universe, I just was following my path, my own path. So it's uh, difficult to explain every path. So what I'm going to answer or the perspective in which I will answer the questions uh, will be that, will be from that perspective. Okay, so, um, so I, I encourage you to follow other truths also to, to, to seek for information in other places, not to just have my own information, <clears throat> not to believe in just what I say. My, my answers or my guidance could be taken like, um, like a guide, like a, a different clue, but it's not the main truth. So. I, I invite you to study more, to look for different other perspectives. Don't just keep with one way of thinking. We need to improve ourselves, changing every time in different ways of understanding the truth. So this is the first idea of remembering, <clears throat> which is my memories from my path through the universe. And also there is another concept of remember which is, uh, which comes from the Latin meanings, which is remember. Member means a part of something. Yeah, the different parts, Rem members, the members of a community, the members of the body. So different members. So remember <coughs> is the origin of the word remember, which is to put all the members, the part together again. That's uh, the, the main concept of, of the idea of remembering. So my uh, goal answering questions or guiding people is not just telling the things that I have remembered from the past, but also to help people to understand how the different parts are connected. So it's not that I have all the information from every uh, issue of the universe, is that I can help to understand how those issues are connected. So we could have the whole, the big picture of, of everything. That, that's my main goal. So that's the concept of remember uh, that I would like to, to, for you to know before I start answering questions. <clears throat> and um, the third one, there's no word for it in English for that, but in Spanish is recordis. Recordar, um, which comes from Latin to, which means to go back to the heart. In Latin, uh, heart it means uh, it, it says cor, cordis. So uh, recordis to remember to uh, is to go back to the heart. So that's the other aspect of everything that I do, which is to try to go back to the self, which is the concept of the I am. That's why all my projects are about the I am. So uh, I will try to do some more videos in English just to explain more about the concepts, the philosophy, my projects, everything. So you can also 
have it. Uh, I have plenty of time now to do so, so I will try to, to do that. Uh, but I settle these uh, hours to, to answer the questions that you may have from, <clears throat> from everything that you maybe uh, have heard about me, read about me, or, um, or read about any other issues that you may want to know or questions that maybe you wouldn't get from the initiation series or any video that is in Spanish and you don't understand what I'm saying. So all these questions, and it doesn't matter which issue they are, which, um, which uh, items they, uh, they, they touch, uh, <coughs> it's uh, about everything. So um, we need to also respect that every person may be in, the, in different levels of awareness and different levels of learning so all of them are good enough. So uh, maybe there are some uh, social questions, some very basic questions about all these things, some very advanced questions about all this, but we need to put all that together so we can all have a new perspective of everything. Maybe we think we know some stuff, but we can see another perspective through the questions of people that are beginners in all these issues. So saying that um, as a presentation, um, I will check the questions that you have sent in English to us. And I remember you that you can, um, you can uh, send those questions through the Instagram account, Facebook account, and by email <coughs> to uh, the RCM Foundation. So you to know I had a foundation, the name is RCM. So RCN were the, the priests and priestesses in the Atlantean times that uh, they helped us to uh, know about the world, to talk with the world, to understand the connection with everything. So that's why I named the foundation like them, RCN. So we are the new RCN. So uh, if you look for that, um, for, for that uh, account in in Instagram and Facebook, you can write there the questions uh, and, and they will send them to me. Not all of them, uh, not personal questions. I won't, uh, I won't answer uh, personal questions. I will just answer uh, general questions that are use, useful for everyone. So that's it. Mm, pretty much. I, I think that that's all that I had to say before. <clears throat> and um, well, sorry for my English if I'm not speaking well. And maybe sometimes I I made a mix between British and and English. I don't know why, but I heard different people, so I took the slang from all of them. <laughs> so sometimes I have a weird accent. So excuse me for that. <laughs> um, so I have here a list of questions. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go through all of them today, but uh, remember that every Friday I will be answering in English, OK? So um, first question I have here, <coughs> it says, is it possible to use this crisis and change the whole system? And how would it change? Banks and the big powers of the world are getting richer, and this crisis, with this crisis, with loans and blah blah blah, is it possible to put a stop and change it all? And how? Well, this crisis is just one of all of the crises that are coming. <laughs> so, <laughs> relax. <laughs> it's not just. Um, uh, this is just a beginning of a, of a big crisis of the system. It's not just this, it's not just the virus. The virus is just trying to help us to understand uh, the concept of the virus. It's just trying to help us to understand that we have to rethink about the system, that we have to rethink about our own lives. You cannot change the whole system before you change your own system. And we can blame now the banks, we can blame the governments, we can blame everyone outside, but what do you do within your house? 
What do you do inside? What are your thoughts about how you have handled your life uh, and what do you do every day and what you are not doing anymore because you are locked? Um, so I think this is an opportunity not to rethink now about the whole system. It's, a, it's an opportunity to rethink how we have built our own system in our own life. <clears throat> Remember that the whole system around the, the big system um, of the banks, the government, economics, everything, um, is just a projection of how people are. Every reality is how people is. So instead, uh, it's, it's, I know it's difficult to think about uh, about this and not to blame someone. We have come from an era of two or 3,000 years in which it was easier to blame someone for our, for our problems uh, than take care of our own problems. So um, <clears throat> I would say that every system that we have is the system that we deserve at any time. And why is so? Because uh, we as a society, um, we are constructed not by groups, we are constructed by individuals. So these individuals are in need of groups. Why they are in need of groups? Because one individual can handle the whole thing. So we need the help of many others. First of all, the family, then the friends, then society around us. First of all, the ones that share the same ideas that I do, and then the whole, uh, I don't know, the whole um, philosophy of a, of a group of people, uh, <clears throat> and then the society. So we need, we need to feel, to, we need to feel uh, that we are supported by a group because we are mammals. That's the main idea of why we need this systems that control groups instead of the individual. Uh, because we are mammals and we know, uh, and we have survived through time and space in this planet because we were able to have a connection with the other beings in our families, in our culture. So we created culture, we created the systems, we created everything as a tool for survival. So <clears throat> if we, think about that, we, we are talking about survival. All the systems that have been created in our world are not because we want to be better, are because we need to survive in the world. So the base of all the systems are that we need to keep moving, keep surviving. So the systems just will change a bit until we realize that the main need of the system, the main people that needs the system is us. <clears throat> so if we don't change within, the system won't change outside. And I know this is kind of metaphoric and, and usually it's not practical, but that's because we want uh, answers right now. It's because we don't see the process, the whole process. For example, um, uh, we don't have republics because people wanted to be republicans. We don't, we don't have democracy because people wanted to elect their own uh, president. We have republics and democracy because in France, there were a lot of people that needed bread to eat and there, were, there was no... no uh, um, no money, no resources to help the people in the, in the, in the fields to make more um, food. So we run out of, in France, they run out of bread. <clears throat> so that thing of hunger, yeah, the hunger of a whole population made the philosophers say, maybe it's the beginning, the need of something new. But if you think about it, the society didn't change much since that time. Society still thinks or fight for eating. They are not doing anything to, to create like globalization in which everyone is 
one and blah 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 we are on the in the path to do so so a system would be changed and adapt through crisis or through a big process of uh, the inner self <clears throat> so in order to to reach that um in order to reach that uh, consciousness, we need to, uh, to take benefit of the crisis to grow within, not to see what they are doing in the system, but to think about what I am doing with this system that I'm creating right now. So yeah, the system will change. The next years will be very difficult for economy, uh, the individual and the, and, the, and the group economy um, but also the crisis always brings new information. They, the crisis brings uh, the, the, um, the possibility to see the faults of the system. So <clears throat> there will come out a lot of people with new ideas of how to solve these problems. So we have to think about this, this crisis, not as an opportunity for the banks, but, in a, but as a, an opportunity to rethink about how we live our lives and that we really doesn't, don't need so many things daily. Uh, if you think about, <clears throat> we, we can have everything we want and we, um, we got used to have everything we want right now. And now this crisis is just holding us and makes us rethink about if, this system of need, need, need is real, real or not. But the, the, the people that buy um, is us, is, is not the banks. The banks are not pushing you to buy. <coughs> it's you who are willing to buy all the time. It's something that we need to work within. It's like any company. If you don't buy any more to that company, the company must close or switch, transform into a different thing. So uh, what we need to do is to start to rethink and instead of putting all the pressure to the banks, the government and the system to change, what we have to do is to put all that ener energy or hunger or whatever that we have into something positive, which is increase, create, develop a new system, a new way of doing it. And first of all, to practice it within, to practice this in my own house, with my own family, with my own friends. That's the main thing that we have to do. In a crisis, we are the ones that have to change. The system will change if we really are able to change. <clears throat> So um, I, think, uh, I think that um, one of the main things that we have to know about this is that we have created these systems, the Republican system, the, democr the democracy system, and even others like the feudal system, the, uh, the kingdoms, all these systems were created not because uh, we wanted them, but because we needed them. And the reason we needed those systems is because we are not still able to be um, 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 to have a self-sustainable system, self-sustainability. It says um, it's like uh, you are not still responsible. Every individual is is not responsible of the system because we are afraid of being responsible. Since the first beginning of humanity, we give the power to someone else, a priest, a guru, a shaman, a leader, a king, a feudal, a, a prince, a president, <coughs> a, an emperor. Everyone that we gave the power to, they took the power and they do whatever they please with that power because we give it to them. And then we need to make revolutions to change that power. But instead of recognizing the power itself, we choose another one to give the power to. So I guess that this crisis that we have now is to rethink about not the system that is outside, 
is about why do we as people repeat that every time? And don't think about the president, think about your couples, think about your family, about your friends, who you choose to be your friends, who you choose to be your couple, who you choose to, 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 to be the partners, who you choose to be the family. <clears throat> so if you cannot handle your friends, your couples and your family, so that means that well, why do you think you are gonna be able to handle a country, okay? So that's why the system won't change until the whole population start to rethink about themselves within. And I think this is an opportunity crisis because we have all been sent by Mother Earth to rethink about what we have done in these past years to our room, which is our houses. So think about it, meditate about it, and let's see what you are going to do when you can go out. I think this is <clears throat> kind of the idea of the concept. Um, so second, second question. What are the top three most valuable practices to do during this awakening? Um, you mean this awakening about this crisis or the awakening in general? I don't know what, which specifically, but I can maybe tell three of them that since I was a child, um, my guides used to tell me. There are, um, in order to be a, a being, a self, you need to be in coherence with three parts of yourself. The first one is the body, the material aspect of yourself. The other one is the soul, which is the energetical aspect of yourself. And the other one is the spirit, which is the mental aspect of yourself. So body, emotion, and mind. <clears throat> These three must be uh, aligned one to each other so we could, um, we could be a, a proper being, a good channel. We have to remember this. Since the very moment of the creation, uh, the beginning of everything, uh, the main settlement of the whole structure of reality was first the vibration. This vibration that was created is the one that we call the waves of mind. Vibration is the mind that creates everything that holds everything. This vibration can be low or, low or high. These different aspects of the vibration creates the energy. This energy is what we are going to call the emotions because it's energy in movement. It's all the energy that uh, goes through positive, negative, positive, negative, creating the balance and the the movement and the expansion of the universe. And then through all this expansion, contraction, and, <clears throat> and all this positive and negative, uh, we start to create the, uh, the atomic reality. So electrons, neutrons, protons, all these particles of the universe that start to create the concept of matter through energy and by vibration. So these three main concepts are the ones that only exist in everything and in, in, in the reality. So for us, for humans, we call that our body, our emotions and our thoughts. <clears throat> so uh, the universe to be aligned, to be connected and to be able to create needs to be in flow with the vibration, the energy and the matter, okay? Everything has to be in a coherence. So if matter is not coherent, it cannot feel the energy around. And if the energy is not coherent, so it cannot feel the flow of the mind. So vibration changing. So that's what usually happens to us. We are so ruled by our thoughts and we are so bounded to the physical world in order to survive with fear, with sex, with all these low energies that we cannot handle um, because of 
I don't know, genetics, because of, um, of our way of thinking, because the ideas of our family, the concepts of our culture, because of all these uh, different concepts, um, we, we, are, um, we have divided the three aspects of the self. And also through many years, we've been pushed to cover our emotions, <coughs> not to express emotions, because it's not good to express emotions. Lots of people said that. So uh, even the people that helps us and that sometimes want us to be fine, they usually say when you are sad, don't be sad, don't cry, yeah? And those words are not good. If you are sad, you have to be sad. If you want to cry, you have to cry. Uh, we, we stuck the emotions within because we don't think they are useful, but they are the main, um, uh, the main um, fuel of the body and uh, the main source of the vibration. So, so um, uh, we have to think about all these three concepts and how we didn't to care. <coughs> we didn't take care of, uh, of the three of them. And I guess um, uh, we have to make a lot of changes uh, to connect that properly. Because when we do that connection with the three aspects of the universe, what we can do is to download the information from the whole universe. Because once you have a proper body, once you uh, let the emotions flow around your body, once you, uh, once you uh, get rid of all the thoughts that are not yours and you start to think and create your own realities by thinking, so you are connected to the waves of the whole universe. You are connected with the coherence uh, and the, the, the core of the reality. So, so that allows you to connect with the higher self, with other beings, with other realities, with other dimensions. So you start to download all this information to yourself, which is really, really important, really, really good. For, for, for you, for the universe, because everything starts to be in balance. So um, I was asking sometimes to my guides, uh, how can I accomplish that? <clears throat> and, uh, and of course, there are thousands and millions of techniques and stuff to do. And you can look for those. You can just um, do everything that you possibly want to learn to have balance in the moment of awakening. Um, and uh, by the way, moment of awakening is always, it's not a period of time, it's not just now, it's not during the process of a crisis, it's something that we are constantly doing. Awakening means to be aware of something new, <clears throat> um, something new. And if you think about that, you are learning all the time. You are, um, you are um, uh, taking information from everything that happens, from everything that, 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 that you do, from everything that you learn. You are learning constantly until the moment you die and even after when you die. So, um, so what we have to, to think about is that uh, awakening is a, is a constant process of humanity, is, is the natural process of humanity. So there's no uh, people that have awaked, uh, that have, that awakened. Um, there's no people that is still sleeping. Uh, we can talk about that concept that some people are less aware than other people, but there's nobody that is fully aware and there's nobody that is fully asleep. <coughs> we all are doing the process. So in order to, uh, to be coherent in that process of awakening, of, uh, of awareness of yourself, of the reality, of the truth, there are, for my guides, they said, there are only three things that you have to do. And then you can add many, many other thousands of stuff to all these three. And these main three things that we have to do is first one, what do we do with our body? Uh, the body 
is a construction of cells, <coughs> which are the bricks of, of nature. And, um, and the cells receive the energy and the, 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 the physical energy, the physical um, um, aspect, the, the physical um, food through what you eat. Okay, so they grow, they divide, they they create more organs, they create more, um, they create the skin, they create everything in your body because of every cell that you eat, every um, mineral, every uh, every uh, components of nature that you um, ingest. So um, so what you are your cells and the being that you know of yourself which is your body is the product of everything that you have eaten and everything that you eat every day and everything that you will eat in the future is <clears throat> the main uh, source of the matter that your body will will become so um so if we think about this uh if we want to be coherent with our body in a proper balance, we need to think about how are we feeding the body? Because if we feed the body in an improper way, if we feed the body with shit, <laughs> we can say that. <laughs> um, if, we, if we are um, giving the body some stuff that are not good for our health, um, so uh, the body still, uh, st uh, starts to stock and starts to replicate in every cell the information of that food. So it's not that you just eat, you feel fine, and then you go to the bathroom and that's it. It's not like that. Most of the things that you eat goes to every one of your cells and encodes the information of everything you have eaten to the DNA. So the bricks of your reality are the things that you have eaten. So the first thing you have to do in order to make a proper awakening is to rethink about what you eat. If you are eating it properly, if you have a need to make some changes in your diet in every day, um, that's one of the things that you have to think about. And in order to make it properly, <coughs> you have to think that all the vibration and the whole body is like a rainbow. It has low vibration, high vibration, and through that vibration, we can see different colors. And we call that the colors of the chakras. The chakras are the energy from the low vibration, the high vibration in our body. So like a rainbow, we can see the red, the orange, etc. So it means that every one of these colors and the shape of our organs tells us about what we need from the outer world. So we need to eat uh, in order to, to be proper and to take care of our uh, balance of our body, we need to bring food to our, to our bodies that has the seven colors at least. Uh, seven colors every day. You have to, to, uh, to look for fruits, food, that has these different colors and also some fruits, some um, vegetables, some um, uh, some different types types of, of fruit of uh, sorry of food um, that um, that have um, the shape of the parts of the body too. If we <coughs> if we look into that, um, what we are gonna uh, realize is that. Uh, the whole nature is just a projection of the main source of vibration. So every code in the universe, every vibration, every uh, geometry is just multiplied in different shapes through the animal kingdom, the human kingdom, the, the, the vegetal kingdom. So these different realms that are created, they are just expansion of the same vibrations and the same structures of geometry. So if we look into that, we will find that outside in the reality, we will 
see the same patterns that are within our bodies. So we, if we take care of that, we pay attention to that, we will know that there are some fruits with these colors of the chakras, with the shape of the organs of those chakras, and so on. So we can have them to make the balance in our bodies. <clears throat> if we are in a process to connect with the planet Earth and to download information, we will need stuff that are, that is, that are heavy, okay? So we need uh, some things that maybe grow under the Earth, like potatoes, like, well, um, carrots, all these things that are growing below uh, the earth, under the, the, the soil. And um, this, um, this uh, allows you to be more rooted to the planet. And also, uh, of course, um, there are some people that have been very spiritual that needs, the, that needs to, to be here. They need um, meat, fish, chicken, whatever. Uh, uh, you have not, you, you shouldn't fight against your body by food. Um, and what I mean about that is that, um, is that one thing is eating animals. The other thing is the commercial, the market of animals. Okay. It's totally different. So there are people that still need for animals to to eat like other animals need some other animals so it's normal but should be in balance it's something that you have to to look for it you have to maybe take care of the animal uh, you have to uh, it, it should be more balanced with nature the problem that we have today is the market that treats the animals like products so um i am totally against to that like animals like products, uh, they are beings, but those beings like fruits, like trees, like plants have also information that maybe some people need. So I'm not against people eating animals. I'm against the, commer the, the commerce of that. So, um, so don't fight with your mind to control the body <coughs> because the body is, is, is the the car that you have is the vehicle that you have in, in, in here. And maybe the body is not ready still to, uh, to transform itself uh, to what you expect it to be. Okay, so in order to make it better, you need to, uh, to do a proper process. So if you don't want to be more spiritual and go up, of course, you will need um, to leave the, uh, the meat, you will have to leave the fishes, you will have to leave all these uh, animals and use just trees, seeds, plants, um, um, fruits, because they are the product of photosynthesis, which is the light. So they, are, they grow through the minerals and the light. That is why if you want to be more enlightened, you need to eat more light which is fruits, seeds, plants. <clears throat> By photosynthesis, they, they made the, the product. So, um, so, well, this is one of the concepts uh, of, of the body. So think about what you eat and try to change your diet, but slowly, don't do it like, okay, tomorrow I will change everything. No, you have to, to to prepare the body to make the transition into a different diet. Otherwise, the body will suffer and you will start eating again the same things like you did it before to compensate that, uh, that need. So must be very, very um, slow, okay? The change of the body. Then the second one, <clears throat> the second one is about emotions and is related with the soul. And it's uh, very easy. Uh, it is um, breathing, breathing. So the first one is food. What am I eating? And the second one is how am I breathing? The, 
the, the balance of all the emotions are controlled by the heart and the lungs. This region here is the one that compensates and balance, okay, the structure of energy around the body. It's like the pulse that makes the body to be aligned. So the heartbeat and the pulse of the lungs, okay, is the one that creates the balance in the energy and makes the energy flows properly all around the body and the organs. So that's why we need to think about how do we breathe? Do we ever thought, do, did we ever think about how we were breathing? <clears throat> and that, that's something interesting because um, there's a lot of people that breathe by the mouth and the mouth is not for breathing, the mouth is for eating. You need to use the nose, the nose to breathe properly. And not only breathing in, but also breathing out, okay? So breathe in by the nose, breathe out by the nose and go through all your body thinking about the emotions. And when you seek the emotion, when you feel these emotions that are moving, that you have not worked with, um, that are hidden in some organ, you just bring consciousness to that and breathe properly through the nose. Hold it as much as you can and then breathe out through the nose again all the time you can. You can try do it five seconds in counting. Yeah and holding five seconds and then five seconds out. And when you accomplish these five seconds, just add another one and another one and another one, okay? Until all the, the, the seconds you can breathe in while you're counting, holding the air and then breathe out as much as you can. This helps you to balance the energy and the emotions of the body. So this is like a meditation in which you only have to think about how you breathe. And remember, not breathing and filling your lungs up. You have to go to the di uh, diaphragm. I don't know how it says, um, the, the lower part of the, of the lungs. <coughs> and from there, you feel like if you are um, uh, um, blowing a balloon, uh, yeah, blowing a balloon uh, in, in, your, in your stomach and feel first the stomach and the lower part of the lungs feeling and to the top. And then when you release the air from the nose, you do exactly the same from below up, okay? so. Uh, you first uh, leave uh, the air from the from the bottom to up. The last thing that you uh, leave outside is the, the 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 higher part of the lungs. So <clears throat> this breathing allows you to be balanced in every in every um, meditation and everything that you that you do. And the third one, the third the third valuable aspect uh, is the mind and the mind can restore thinkings and can restore beliefs by just uh, realizing that all these thoughts and beliefs are just a projection of vibration so if i change my vibration i can change the perspective of this belief or this thought and one of the um, healing aspects of how you can do that is laughing. Laugh is a way in which we can change the vibration of the body. And if we are allow, allowing us to laugh from ourselves, of ourselves, <clears throat> if we laugh about our, about our problems, if we provoke a laugh, like, um, uh, how do you say in English? Uh, the, the therapy of love. Um, when you just see a problem 
and provoke the 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 full part of you like like how full i was doing this and just provoke the laugh and you will see that during the process of laughing the vibration will will switch and suddenly the problem will stop being a problem and will i will begin to be a challenge <clears throat> so um it's something that we have to practice and how to do it. I know it's difficult because we were not programmed to laugh on problems but um, or beliefs. But when you start to, to laugh about the stuff, about your yourself, you realize that nothing really was so important, that nothing really was so straight, that, um, that you can switch the perspective of every beliefs and every thought just by laughing at it. And so that's why the three main tools to go into awakening is change the way you feed yourself, change the way you breathe and laugh more. <clears throat> um, the third one, third question. I feel that I feel that a transformation is going on. Do you know? Uh, do you know about 2020 and the changes that will occur? Well, I've been, I will, I've been speaking, I've been explaining about the 2020 since 2015. Uh, maybe not much until it was 2018. Uh, but I was usually talking that um, 2020 would be the year to reestablish, restart, reset the planet. Uh, <clears throat> it would be a year, it is a year, in which many things will be tried to, to put on balance and order again. <clears throat> I've, been, I've been sharing in Spanish too that a few weeks ago, the planet Saturn has entered entered in the constellation, or not the constellation, but the, um, uh, in front of the constellation of Aquarius. So that means Saturn is the, is the karma planet, is the one that brings order, is the one that <clears throat> makes us uh, realize of everything that we haven't worked in ourselves. Uh, so is the one that says, okay, the game is finished, we need to work. And Aquarius is the constellation that represents freedom, that represents innovation, that represents um, uh, not responsibility at all. And this, um, these two opposite concepts of Saturn, the work and law, entering in the constellation of uh, freedom and not responsibility, uh it it is talking that for the next two years 2020 2021 and even even a part of 2022 uh we are going to be as a society as a, as a humanity uh brought to a process of um rethinking about everything that we have done so uh, the main things that are going to happen is that we will have a crisis in every one of our aspects. Uh, in the inner aspects, in the outer aspects, everywhere. So uh, economical crisis, sanitary crisis like we are having today. Um, so it would be like two years of crisis, of chaos, but it's not because someone is punishing us, it's just because um, it's like if you have a test, you have a, an exam to do uh, in, I don't know, in a, in a week, yeah? And you have the whole week to study all the issues, all the items that you have to study for the exam. And you knew that there will be an exam someday so you can go into another level of consciousness, another course. Um, but you decided not to study properly. You just was, you just were reading the pages like 
not reading properly, not understanding really well, and you decide to make this this test, this exam, um, even though you hadn't done the job of study. Okay, so uh, now is the exam, 2020, 2021. We are starting the exam. Um, for us to go into another level. So all the things, all the problems that we are going to have in these next two years are to test humanity to see if we are really able to go in another level of consciousness. So that's why we need to work with ourselves too much. That's why we need to share with others um, uh, ways to connect with ourselves. Uh, I guess that's important so we could uh, help everyone to understand that it's not just a crisis that will go and we just can keep doing the same stuff that we were doing before. Um, we have to rethink about everything that we have done. We have to rethink about the way of life that we were holding in uh, this period of time. Um, so this is... Uh, uh, this will be two years in which um, many of the things, war, pandemic, um, many bad things will occur, many bad things will happen, but we should not see them like bad things. We should see them like a, a teacher, which is Saturn, trying to make us remember that we had a test and the test has begun. And if you hadn't studied, uh, we will have problems on the test. So for society, uh, it's a real problem, but for those who were working uh, within, for those who are aligned with the planet, it's not a tough test. Uh, it's not a tough test. test, it's just another test is just another proof to prove ourselves if we are uh, ready or we are uh, prepared to go into another way of, of consciousness. We have to think about all the crises and problems that we will have in these next two years uh, are just a process of evolution. It's, uh, and evolution sometimes hurts. Uh, it's like being born, being born hurts. Um, uh, every change in our lives hurts. Everything that we have learned in our lives was uh, normally it hurt. And that happened because uh, in order to create the proper <coughs> uh, geometry of our self, of our being, we need pressure energy pressure, energetical pressure uh, in order to shape ourselves into a perfect, um, a perfect being. Uh, it's something natural. Uh, for example, the most common way to explain this is a diamond. Uh, a diamond is not something that grows up in a tree. A diamond, the most precious shape of the world that lots of people want to achieve. Uh, all the, these minerals, like the crystals that we, the, the, that are beautiful, the diamonds, the most strongest car carbon uh, shape um, um, mineral, uh, this beautiful being uh, only exists because of the pressure of the tectonic plateaus only exist because the heat of the inner world. They all exist because of pressure. So re replicate this concept to the whole universe and you will find that matter needs pressure in order to grow, needs pressure in order to uh, rise, like trees, like plants. You need, they need the pressure of soil to feel the need of going up. So um, this is the same that happens to us. In times of crisis, all the seeds start to rise, to grow. 
And this connect with the question four, which is, do you know what is the purpose of this virus? Is, <clears throat> I would say, is the same purpose of any virus in human history. Virus is the tiniest being that exists in our biological world. And they are perfect machines of DNA. They evolve through DNA. So they need to replicate themselves through DNA. So what they do is to divide their own DNA and to replicate that DNA inside your own DNA so it could be multiplied by itself many times and suddenly your own body start to be adapted to that DNA because you are part of it now. So the system of virus are not a system to kill, are a system to improve biology. Since the very beginning of the creation, <coughs> the creation of this planet, the creation of biology in this planet, the, the nature itself created all these bacteria and virus, mostly viruses, that helps us to improve ourselves constantly. If we wouldn't have illnesses, if we wouldn't have um, viruses in our history, we wouldn't be here because everything or the whole body has been prepared to, to survive in this environment because of the viruses that were pushing us to evolution. So we are talking right now of a global evolution. We are talking about a change of concepts, a change of ideas of a new humanity. We are talking about uh, how to go into another level of consciousness. So when we talk about that as a spiritual beings in our mind, yeah, it's all beautiful, but for the body, the only way they can do that, that, uh, that um, jump into another level of consciousness is by nature. And nature only push the body through this kind of stuff. <clears throat> they make a difficulty in the environment. So the bodies that are the most prepared, they can pass through and they can leave the, the information to the others uh, ahead in the evolution. So I guess that the coronavirus that we have today is, is an opportunity to activate our crown. Corona means crown in Spanish. Um, so um, in Latin too, so, so the crown, we are a civilization that uh, as um, uh, humanity that is willing to reconnect with the crown chakra, with the concepts of the spirit, with the concept of the I am, with the self, to reconnect of who we, with who re we really are. And in order to do so, we need to prepare our bodies to do that. So um, this pandemic, which is global for the first time in so long, that is the first time that so many countries in every continent, but Antarctica, that everyone is um, touched by, by, this, uh, by this virus, by this pandemic, um, is, is something that for Earth is this um, is a symptom of evolution. It's not a symptom of a crisis. It's a crisis for our way of living, but it's not a crisis for Earth. For Earth is a way of evolution, okay? So the message that this virus has is go home, think about what you have done in the past centuries and in your own life, what you have done in these past years. Think about yourself. What do you want to become in this planet? Are you, uh, <clears throat> um, are you, um, um, do you worth to be in this planet? You know, all these things that help us to understand that earth and biology doesn't have moral. Moral is something that we humans created just to organize our societies, but it's not something natural for nature it's we need to improve. We need to improve ourselves. 
we need to adapt and the planet is going to be different. So we need to adapt to that different planet. So this that is happen happening right now with the virus is something that helps us all to understand that we need to jump into another level of consciousness. And the way we are going to do so is if we change our bodies, if we change the way we live. And that's uh, the main concept of this coronavirus. But every virus, every virus in the history uh, of humanity is and have been and will be a tool of evolution. So let's see if I have time for another one because I've been speaking too much at, at the beginning. Um, the last one I will try to answer is, um, what is the difference of pur purposefully manifesting? I've never said that word, <laughs> sorry. What is the difference of purposefully manifesting versus letting the creator guide you? How can we connect more with the spirit or higher selves? Um, okay, to finish today, um, the difference between the manifestation and letting us be guided by the creator. So <clears throat> first of all, we have to recognize this, that we are, everything that exists is just the projection of one only mind, idea, being, self, whatever you want to call it. God, spirit, it doesn't matter. It has many names, but it's the singularity of reality. It's just one spot, one point, one reality. So this is the only thing that creates everything around. But everything around is not something outside that. It's a projection of that. What does it mean? That everything in the creation is also the creator but in different shapes, in different ways, in different aspects, maybe more divided. Of course, we are very split in the universe, but we are the creator. We, we, it's not someone that is outside and guiding us because we are in the limits of creation. No, we are part of it. It's not something different. We are projections and reflections of the only truth. So, <clears throat> um, having that information, uh, we have to realize that to manifest a reality, we all can manifest realities, but we, we cannot manifest a reality if we are very divided or in incoherence. If we are not coherent, as I spoke before, if we don't have a balance in between the body, the soul, and the spirit, so manifestation won't be according to the higher self, it would be according to our needs. And when you manifest stuff according to your needs, it's your needs that manifest, it's not you. So that is a condition. You are not manifesting anything you are just creating the needs for yourself right now. So sometimes we think that we're manifesting stuff or trying to create stuff, but we have no idea that when that comes, it's according to what we really need. <clears throat> so if we are not coherent with the self, everything that we are going to manifest outside, um, will be according to our needs inside. And sometimes the needs that we have within are not exactly the same that we expect. We may in our, in our heads have an idea of what we want to manifest in our lives for, for living better, for whatever, but maybe our heart, our soul, our emotions, and our body needs a totally different thing. So when you receive that thing that you have manifested, it's according to the needs that you have within. And maybe you won't be able to handle it because you were not in balance. 
So that's why we usually don't manifest. We usually project needs. That's what we do normally. So to pur purposefully manifesting would mean um, that you have a purpose, as it says. And the purpose usually is not about just one being, it's about many beings that are part of yourself. Like for example, humans, okay? So I will manifest something uh, for, for, for humans. So manifest, manifesting something is, um, is when, um, when you are not doing it from the need, is when you are doing it because it's something that just flows from you, okay? It's something that it's, uh, you don't have to do it, but you just can't do it. So, um, so uh, the manifestation, the, the way you can manifest is the real way in which you can manifest is when you, after being coherent, you realize that you are the creator, that you are a tiny part of the creator. And that is when you don't expect to, for anyone to create anything because you are capable of manifesting realities, but the creator never creates anything by need. It creates because it can create, because it, uh, uh, it enjoys to create. So um, knowing that you have first to make balance of your body, your soul and your mind, put them all together as a, as a being, and when you have that all connected, then you have to be in balance with the higher self. But when you are connected to the higher self, you will realize that the higher self is just a projection of the real one self, which is God, the universe, whatever, as you want to call it, the singularity. So when you have all that, you just realize that this trinity that you, that you are is just a projection of the creator. When you make a um, joint of all that, when you make a gathering of all the aspects and you become the singularity itself is the moment when you are, um, are really manifesting stuff in your life, not expecting anything from any other being because you are the being. <clears throat> and letting the creator guide you is when you are not uh, aware of, uh, fully aware of who you really are, um, so you are a tool of your higher self. Until you cannot be connected to the higher self, which is the awareness itself, you are just a tool. You, ha uh, you have to imagine like if the higher self is a, is a script writer, okay, for a for a play in a theater. So he writes a script uh, with different lines that, that uh, the actors must say. So he chooses the actors and actresses and creates all this structure in the, in the play, in the theater, and they go and play the, the, the thing, okay? The, <clears throat> the, the opera, whatever it is. And, but you are behind the scenes, maybe sometimes doing like this to make remember the actors and, or actresses, the lines that they forgot, okay? So like pointing and saying like, you forgot this, but uh, that's like a guide. Um, so, uh, so when the, the moment or the way in which you really manifest is when you, the scripter, the, the, the one that is writing the play, goes and also act by itself. So he knows the play, he wrote the play, and he's playing the play, okay? So that, that is to be fully aware and manifest the creation. But letting the creator guide you is like you being an actor. You are the tool of the people, the, the, the guy that wrote the, the script. <clears throat> so 
you just let yourself guide by your own creator, by the higher self. So you could uh, be um, properly moved in this reality. Both are good. The, there is no good or bad in these two realities, but um, uh, of course, it, it's more meaning, meaningful and it's more um, 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 it's more evolution uh, to learn how to man manifest yourself. It's a long path, but you can do it. Or also being guided by, by the creator, uh, it's being guided by a part of yourself and you just say, I'm a tool, I'm a tool. Do whatever you want with me because it never will do any, any harm to you because it's yourself. So it's a different part of yourself, but it's, it's even your, yourself. So, uh, <clears throat> so your higher self never will use you as something, as a, uh, as something without purpose. Uh, it, it's like you trying to, to guide a son or daughter, okay? It's, it's something like that. So think about yourself as a son or daughter and you can, let, let you guide by your higher self or be a, a coherent son or a coherent daughter and become yourself your own mother and your own father which is to manifest um, so well I hope that clarifies a bit uh, these concepts of the five questions I gave and uh, of course, next Friday, I will be sharing with you the other um, five questions or more, who knows, that I have here. And I invite you to, to keep um, watching, sharing this information, if it's useful, uh, if you think it's going to be useful for other people. And um, well, I, I, I wait for you here with more questions. I remember you, you can write for, for more questions in English uh, at the RCM Foundation um, Instagram and Facebook. And uh, as I said, every Friday, while it's the quarantine, I would be here answering questions from Monday to Thursday. Yeah from Monday to Thursday in Spanish and then Fridays in English. So thank you for being there and I hope to see you again uh, next Friday. Bye.